record button. And I will also start the live transcript. Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody, to the weekly May 11th Chaos, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, work group meeting. It's great to see everybody. Uh, new faces as well. So nice to have everybody here. Um, I did put the meeting minutes in the chat. So if you could maybe add yourself to the meeting minutes. And today we were wondering what the last trip is that you took. It even could be to the grocery store. So <laughs> whatever <laughs> you want to set the scope around it, that's totally fine. <laughs> Well, UAE, that's interesting. I've never been there. No, me neither. It was fun. I bet. I too much fun. I do want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you do run out of money at some point. I do know that. Yeah, like everywhere you spend money. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on just a second. I got to do one thing. Sean, right. can you talk to Trying to pronounce it. Sorry, what? The second place you put in there. Uh, temp Tempere, Finland. It's uh, about an hour and a half from Helsinki. It's where they have their major technological university in Finland. Tempere. Yes, I'll actually, I'll actually be talking about chaos when I'm there. All right. Um, well, great. It's good to see all these places that people are going. It's kind of fun. Um, let's see, I'm going to share my screen. So we have had some progress. Um, so there's been some really great um, support from folks taking a look at, at the open PR. So the biggest thing on the pull requests in the DEI working group is around changes re revising the metrics so thanks to tejas mate uh, for taking a look at a number of these and so i had taken a look at some of these and so there's a there's a nice link here if you see kind of describing everything that was done um, associated with the particular issue around revising the metric. And we can take a look at the files changed. So it's adding attendee, speaker, and volunteer for this one, for the demographics. There was a request in the issue to remove this, line 14. Determine if new attendees, speakers, and volunteers are from diverse backgrounds. Um, that seemed redundant with row 11. I don't know if you can all see that. Determine the diversity of attendees, speakers, and volunteers. So that was a removal. And I think, um, and then just adding when this was last reviewed on March 8th. So these were the recommendations. Any comments on this? So this was the original issue. So hearing none. <laughs> looks good to me. Okay. Yeah. I had done the original, this issue, and then it was really just about kind of implementing these, these things. So I, it, this should be pretty straightforward. Um, there are a few things that we'll have to do here just in terms of kind of finishing this out. Um, I'm happy to take care of that. So I can, I can merge that. Um, it looks good to me as well. 
Okay, so the next one was update copyright year and remove reference line of sample template. So this was on metric release candidate. Does anybody see what's going on here? Issue template metric release case. So this is on our template. You know, the issue templates that we have. So this is the temp, Sean, you're muted. This is. Yeah, I see. I can see the changes. Okay. They, they make sense. Basically, the, the red is, it's weird how they do it. The red is removed, but really all they've done is add the, some of the, whatever's highlighted there on the right. Yeah. Updating a copyright component. So is the removal of the blog posts that that's just kind of um, it's not, I know extraneous, mm -hmm. unnecessary. It looks like that's the request that it's I see. extraneous. So okay. let me take a look at. Um, see I was going to say here. nefarious, but I mean that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Implies <laughs> some sort of evil doing, whatever. Um, metric release candidate. So this is the release candidate. And if we take a look at So that all stays the same. So revising name of metric Where is revising? I'm a little confused here. Oh, this is a, oh, this is the, there's two, there's two PRs here. One's against the re, three, against three different docs. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So what is this first one for the release candidate? I think maybe when the PR was open, maybe they, they remove they remove like the 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 content and put it back in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So me, but then it should show the red part, right? Because yeah, it should show something over here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That I'm also sense. not. I'm gonna make a few suggestions on this. I would prefer a pull request against an individual document, not three documents. I don't know what people think of that. And Ruth or right. I, I, th I think in general, the best approach is so if the pull request is trying to edit three metrics at one time, is that what you're saying? It's actually trying to edit four documents at one time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I think it is best practice for this kind of thing to just do a pull request for each document you edit. That way, if yeah. two of them are fine, two of them require changes, we can get the two that are fine taken care of. Right, like this makes sense to me, update copyright. Right. So it, it makes it easier to keep the train rolling and know yeah. where we are if, okay. if it's one at a time. So that'd be my recommendation. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe we want to put that in like the issues, like review, send in one PR part document. Maybe. I like that. Yeah. Matt, I want to say something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I don't know Teja's mate, but I think we can pass on this one because it might confuse them. 
on how to break PRs into. So, okay. So we might, I do not know like the level of maybe Tejasmate is a new contributor. But it might confuse them on like how to differentiate the PRs. So we might want to pass on this one and, you know, on the other issues, you know, indicate send one per PR. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe I'll edit this. You'd recommend simply closing, right? This PR. Would that make sense to you? Would that help it, Ruth? I understand what you're saying, but like. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to like think if we want to review this as this and you know review this the way it is except this is very confusing and then for other ones like we now do like the one per pr okay i get what you're saying because so... they just might be passing by <laughs> and just wants to make one contribution i do not want to actually tejas has been doing a lot of work across okay a lot of the work group repositories. So doing a lot of the metric updates. I think Matt Matt's Kanto has a comment. Oh okay. Matt? Like on chat. Oh in chat. Yeah. Problem with clarity on the part of chaos shouldn't chaos be the one to split it. Um I don't know about that. Um Mm, I, I don't know that I see it just as a problem on clarity. Like that seems like it's pushing it a little bit. Um, I just, I feel like it's just good practice to do one PR per document. So to Sean's point, like, I think we can see the, see what's being changed. But like, for example, if we merge this PR, it's not clear what this part is about. Um, provide the GitHub issue link associated with the original metric release. So, so this is a proposal to link to the metric website. I think we had actually decided to keep it at the GitHub issue. This one makes sense to update the copyright. And this was to a suggestion to remove um, blog posts, which I, I agree with this one as well. I mean, if it's not clear that this is going anywhere, you know what I mean? This is just a, so this one I would say is a, is I would agree with, this one I would agree with, this one I might want more conversation on, and this one's not totally clear. So Matt, you're suggesting that we are the ones that should break it out? Yes, no. Okay. 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 Um, so what, Ruth, what was your suggestion here then? Should we? Yeah, I think we can put like on the other issues, we can put in that, you know, that's, um, you know, um, make sure you send the one PR on the other issues, then also explain why we want him, to, why we want Tejas to break this down. Okay. Because, okay. you know, give him more context. So it's not like I'm giving you extra work. Gotcha. How about this then? Um, Maybe Matt, to your point. How's that? Okay, cool. 
Okay, great. So we're going to wait on that one. Um, next PR, the first two I've taken a look at, second two I have not taken a look at yet. So this is like the first PR. Um, and okay, not solved due to bug and rendering. Revisit the formatting and the data collection strategy. Okay, so it looks like this one wouldn't be merged quite yet. Um, okay, a good change there. Okay. Okay, so it looks like also really great stuff here. Change the file name to match. Okay, yep. Revisit the formatting and the data collection strategy. Change file name and data last review. Check out spread check and mark. Revisit formatting and data collection strategy section. So I think basically this one just is gonna require some. So see like yeah, you know, that's a little off, <laughs> like this white spaces here. So, okay, so this one would require some changes to the, okay. Um, would anybody like to take a pass at trying to fix the formatting? Something I can do as well, but. the formatting on family friendliness so basically you see here oh yeah like there's just, a white space white space not white space like yeah okay it's just it's little things it's, can, it's not rendering well that's I can all probably do that while we're working more in the well if you could do that that'd be great i'll still make this comment could you yeah take a look at this pr and take part in that yep Okay, thank you. You have it? I'm getting it. Yeah. It's 436. Got it. Okay. I think everything else has been updated. Okay, and then Okay, me, let's this one I did take a look at. I just took a sneak peek at this a little bit. There are a few things in this one that maybe we can talk about next time because we have other things to talk about today. But um, essentially, this has some, these are some questions that I just had, which was how, well, we can take a look. So in this metric, this is time inclusion for virtual events, all right? So I'd really like some input on this. So time inclusion for virtual events. Um, So it says examples of time inclusion, which can be implemented include network bandwidth options by platform. So my question was, how is network bandwidth related to time inclusion for an event? Does anybody have thoughts Not on this? I don't think it is. Uh... But I think why maybe why it was there was maybe we had thoughts around um, you know network bandwidth when folks join. Like I'm trying to think how it might have affected me maybe during the morning. I think when I have network bandwidth when it switches like time of the day is like if there was rainfall or something. Okay. But. You know, it's, you can't really see when there'll be rainfall. So. <laughs> uh, I do. I have some thoughts on this. Sure. Uh, so, if it time inclusion for events, I'm assuming this is. Uh, so this this would be the the network bandwidth refers to the ability to either live stream or upload the uh, 
the video to a later date, right? So the the internet connection that you have at the venue is going to uh, affect whether or not you can you can live stream or or up upload those. So so I think network bandwidth is is a consideration for time inclusion for virtual events from the uh, uh, the standpoint of the, the the person putting on the uh, uh, the event. Uh, and then it, it can also be uh, a consideration for people who are trying to live stream the events because we all know that the internet connectivity is is different for for different people. So I can see it on both ends as network bandwidth being a uh, a factor for this. Okay, so um, I'm just kind of rereading the description. Okay. Do you think there would be maybe a new metric that would be around bandwidth? Like those technical considerations? I do I do think that that could be a a a metric. Okay. However, I I think it I think it does need to be addressed in this metric in some fashion. Uh, I'm not sure how it fits with implementation. Uh, but but internet connectivity is it's it's a main factor in whether or not we can even have time inclusion for these events, right? So the 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 virtual participants' ability to watch the virtual event and the event's ability to live stream it is is completely dependent upon internet con connectivity and network bandwidth, uh, which we know can can vary by a event venue uh, and and by participants. So I, I think it does need to be included here. I'm not sure if it needs to be included as a bullet in implementation, but it should be mentioned somewhere in here. Okay. Could you, Kevin, could I ask you to maybe think about how to include it? Uh, yeah. You know, whether it's removing this point here and adding it to objectives or something like that. And this, do you see, I don't know if you can see my screen, but uh -huh. also that point there, there were two that showed up. You see that? Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, maybe just uh, think about a different way to present it in the in the metric, but but kind of maintain, maintain it in there it. still, right? Okay, yeah, that would okay. be cool. If you could take a and could you work off of the existing PR? Uh, yes. Yeah. I showed up late, by the way. Could someone share the link to the, uh, the meeting notes? Yeah, of course. And these are all just the PRs. These are the... Um, okay, thank you, Sean. Um, okay. So Kevin, these were all just, these are the PRs that we're going through for the revising of the metrics. Okay. And so Tejas Mate has been kind of working against the issue. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. I, yeah he's, I, he's been busy elsewhere as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I mentioned this in the chat, but I'll just point out that sometimes things look just fine on the GitHub markdown and they end up not looking fine when they're pulled to the website. I, so I think I removed the extra, I think removing the extra spaces that were there, which GitHub interpreted just fine, should fix it on the website, but I don't think I have a way to test that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid you don't. Uh, it's little little idiosyncrasies with the way that we pull GitHub Markdown onto the website. Uh, sometimes you just have to trial and error it. Okay. Amy, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, going back to the low bandwidth option, I know one thing I did when doing a virtual social is I intentionally picked something that was text and pictures versus more interactive, just to take that into consideration. Um, so I think 
there's a way to word that. I was provided with adequate low bandwidth options at the event. Um, unfortunately, if you're streaming video, there is really no real, real option unless you allow for downloading. Um, so that might be a little hard to word unless it's like an adequate low band option was, you know, something we were talking about for Open Infra Summit for some of the presentations to have more a virtual aspect was just being able to stream the audio and having someone watch a chat room. So, I mean, but it, you're either video or your audio. I mean, I don't know if there's necessarily a low bandwidth option other than going to audio. And I think we need to take that into consideration. All right. Kevin, did you catch that? Yeah. And uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll flag this for Amy when I, when I do the work on it so that she can comment on it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Ruth, and thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Amy, and thank you, Tejas, for um, doing work. So I think at this point, um, uh, sh there are a couple in here. I'll just I'll go back through these PRs. I don't think we'll necessarily merge them now, um, but I think there's been some attention that Sean has given that Kevin will do. I think we asked for something in one of the PRs. You know what I mean? There's still just a little bit of cleanup work, I think, to do. Um, and I think we can get these merged before the next uh, meeting. Good. Are we all right with this? All right. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, moving on. I'm going to not do issues. So we did um, do the code of conduct. So. Um, we have shared this with the audit team just in terms of the changes that we were making. Everything has been accepted at this point. Um, I would really still welcome any uh, feedback on this, but again, the, the two really big things that we did around the code of conduct for the chaos project is to one, ensure that the code of conduct was applicable to um, basically events and, and project work. So I know they're kind of the same thing, but you know, like making sure that we have just a single code of conduct that covers everything chaos related, and we should be good there. Uh, and then really being clearer on the enforcement guidelines. This is one of the recommendations that we had had around what are the kind of the ways that code of conduct violations would be escalated. I think in the prior, people can correct me if I'm wrong, but in a prior version, it wasn't terribly clear how we would handle code of conduct violations. I think it was just that we would go to a code of conduct team and decisions would be made. And that was about it. It was very vague. Yeah. So this is, and this is with the contributor covenant. So we're just pulling it um, from that as well. Amy, did you have a comment? Yeah, one thing we're starting to add in code of conducts, especially for events and being that you mentioned about having one code of conduct for both mm -hmm. is um, following any health um, recommendations. So to make sure that you're adding in there, you know, basically, if you're a COVID mask violation or whatever it is covered in there and for future things that may not be mask or whatever, but if there are health and safety um, rules attached to an event that those can be reported as well. Do you have some sample text? Um, let me see if the foundation sent me it. We discussed it last Friday, so I may not have it yet. Okay, if you do, can you either send it to me or put it in as a comment on this? Yeah. I can, that'd be, I'd, be, I'd be interested in seeing that. And I'm suspecting it would just be kind of like up in here. Like, I don't know if you can see my screen, but like unacceptable behaviors include not following specified health guidance or something like that. I'm gonna, this is not necessarily what I was talking about, but very similar. This okay. was for Open Source Summit North America mm -hmm. that the Linux Foundation added to theirs. Um, okay. So that was their health guidance. That's not necessarily an addition to their code of conduct. I, I see. I did okay. have that in my email. 
Um, gotcha. And I'll check a take a peek at the Open Infrastructure Foundation okay. um, code of conduct and see if they've added it in the events one yet. Okay. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, just a note too. Um, we are going to be updating wherever it was in here the <laughs> the the team, the code of conduct team. So. I think we talked about this in the community call yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think the decision was is that, or at least the recommendation was that Nicole Armstrong and Georg uh, would lead the efforts to um, to find a, a new group of, of of folks to serve as to where violations are reported. Um, so anyway, that's moving forward as well. Oh yeah, thank you, Justin. Yeah, that's section above about reporting or mention of the section the bottom. Okay, that's fair. I know at, at one point we had talked about having kind of two two teams, kind of that, that high-level code of conduct team that would oversee uh, a group of people that would uh, kind of monitor uh, social media. And, uh, and other places for uh, uh, for inappropriate behavior uh, was that was that something that we uh, we continued to have any discussion on or did we uh, abandon that, I don't that line of thought I do remember that and I don't honestly I don't remember <laughs> anything at this moment we meaning is probably been abandoned mm -hmm. so I mean because so monitoring like the the discourse and i think that's where it, it came up with monitoring the discourse channels and yeah. slack and all of this stuff it becomes a uh, an incredible burden for these three people that are on the the code of conduct team well these are just, these folks are just where to report violations right so i think this is written like you know as as members of the community project mm -hmm. maintainers like that kind of stuff mm -hmm. They're like we're all responsible for reporting right and then and then on the on like discourse for example we would have individuals who are uh and i, I forget the term but the uh uh it's not the administrators it's the uh moderators moderators thank thank you thank you amy <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, so then on those, and then we would also have, uh, on those channels, we would have moderators who uh, would perform some function as well. So I'm, I'm just curious if we've had any discussion about the relationship between moderators, code of conduct individuals, and maybe even the, the Board of Governors. Uh, we, we haven't. Okay. I, I mean, I really don't think we have. Okay, that that might be so when we start talking about enforcement and and actually uh, doing stuff with the code of conduct because the the code of conduct is just a piece of paper until we start to until we enforce it or have those systems in place to enforce it. Uh, I think those those three entities and the 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 process that this occurs, I think needs to be discussed. So maybe that's someplace else. Maybe that's a board of governors discussion. So yeah, no, I mean that's fair. It, listening to you talk to, I mean, I I think it would be reasonable to think about who the moderators for Slack would be, mm -hmm. the moderators for, um, and they're not they're just people who kind of just watch the conversation on a day to day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and for discourse as well, um, I would want to make sure that we don't make the process too heavyweight. That if somebody does have a a thing that they want to report that it doesn't have to follow a, like a multi-layered path yeah yeah i think it's it's also important to have a little bit of oversight so if uh if something happens with a moderator uh there can be it can be escalated to the code of conduct team or if something happens at the code of conduct team level it could be escalated to the board of governors uh because if we if we do start uh, uh, enforcing the code of conduct, uh, giving people temporary bans and permanent bans without their ability to uh, 
uh, escalate it to the next level would is be that, uh, it might that, be might be problematic. Is that is that com I don't know. Is is it common in open source that there's like an appeals court for these sorts of decisions, or do the do these? Does this I mean, group... you should be able to defend yourself and say, you know, this is my side of the story. I don't know if it, I would call it an appeals court, well, but you should have at the time of the complaint, you should meet with the committee. Right. I'm asking about the, I agree that there should be a, the, com the committee should communicate with the person openly and even offer them time to air their perspective. I think Kevin was suggesting an appeal to the, I don't know, you call it the board of governors. I think it's just the, is that, I don't know that's what it's called, but board of directors, board of directors, but I, sorry, <laughs> that's the part that I was wondering oh, if, and i yeah. understood it as i have a problem with one of these people who do i go to next well my problem is oh. one of these people who do i go to next i see yeah I'm... well so if if the code of conduct team for example gives someone a permanent ban right what is the how would you defend yourself from that and at, at that point I, it would be the only way to to defend yourself in that case to to give your side of the story would be to escalate it to the board of directors so just outlining that process if if we're going to enforce we probably do have some need to have some ability uh, for appeals uh, and i'm not sure i'm not sure how well a lot of i think there are issues kind of in open source around code of conduct in general so i, I think this is kind of new territory for a lot of open source projects in in uh to, to comment on your what are other 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 open source projects doing so in, enforcement hasn't been a I don't think it's been done well in a lot of communities I, I, I suppose my question is if if the contributor covenant doesn't offer this appeal process do we need to well these are just these are just documents until right. we start to until we start to enforce them right uh, and with the with kind Kevin, of the, the, do you want to take a pass at like a section that would be like appeal but so i i don't know that it needs to be in here oh, i'm maybe. i'm i'm saying that when we start thinking about the code of conduct team and moderators and the process for how this enforcement is done i i think these are things that we just need to talk about and i and i don't have an answer for the the perfect way that it should work or or even if we have to have an appeals process uh, but I, but I, I think when we, when we're talking about what this code of conduct team is going to look like and what the moderators are going to look at, I think these are things that we need to talk about. Yeah. The, and I don't know, I don't have the answer. My first thought is, I think if there was a permanent ban, if just knowing the people in this community, they probably wouldn't do that without checking with the board of directors anyway. And if we specify it, I mean, the more that we specify about the process, then the more complicated we make it in all cases. So, for example, a, like a permanent ban, I would I can see where that's something that you'd want to check with the board of directors on the, the other three consequences um, are, are temporary. I, I just I, I guess I'm I'm just I want to if there's a I want to do it the way other communities do it. I don't want to invent a more oh, let me, complex process. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, can you go oh, go ahead, somebody? Um, I don't think a lot of communities have board of directors. Um, okay. If the smaller communities, Fedora does, CentOS does, Open Infrastructure does, um, but sometimes that is actually part of their code of conduct that the chair of their board is involved early on mm -hmm. so they are part of the code of con you know the code of conduct report they are actually you know the chair is one of the people who get notified and they are involved from the start i do like the idea i heard you say um if it is a permanent ban that it is brought before the board before it is put in place i think that's protection mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that other eyes have seen it you know before a, a final decision like that is made um so it all depends on, you know, like currently, if you look at who is, you know, our code of conduct group, you know, you have 
the chair, a past co-chair and one other person's name I saw, but I can't remember who it was. You know, you've already got kind of that coverage there built in. But if you're planning for the future, I think, you know, going back to kind of what Kevin was saying, if it is a permanent band, it must be run through the board, I think is protection. And if, you know, for that appeal process, maybe the person at that point meets with the board as well to defend themselves as part of that process of whether it is going to be put into effect or not. Okay. So Justin has a comment in here as well. Um, consequence ladder applicable to forums. This is a goal with contributor covenant version two based on Emma's work at Mozilla. Um, not forums of moderation in general, forum, Slack, mailing lists, an appeal mechanism makes sense and probably belongs to the code of conduct committee as a first line. Okay. So Kevin, are you suggesting we halt on the code of conduct for the time being? Uh, no, no, not at all. Okay. Uh, no, I, I think the I think the the work that's happening here is is appropriate, and and perhaps there are a couple sentences or kind of explicit things that we can uh, we can add to it that would connect to the discussion we were just having. Uh, but I'm not completely sure that that discussion we were having needs to actually be included in the uh, in 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 a large way in this document. Maybe just uh, a link to another document, or uh, so. Really, this is just a this is a consideration for kind of the the project governance and how the code of conduct team works, along with in the future. Uh, moderators. So perhaps this discussion happens elsewhere. It doesn't need to be part of the this particular document. Maybe it could be part of our governance document, just like how those those appeals or how that process is handled. Anyway, okay. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna move on. We only have five minutes here. Oh, and I, uh, Amy yeah. did. Amy did uh, put in some text for the health and safety. Yeah, wanna... that wasn't actually what we're adding from the events code of conduct open infra hasn't added it yet. But that was some information from open source summit North America that was sent out. So I had sent it to open infra foundation to give them a little bit of an idea on wording. Because right now everyone's being very careful about making any changes to what they had in their event for COVID protection. So um, related but different type of wording. Um, but once I do get that from Open Infra, I will pop it over to us, so. Do we wanna pull that text out of the chat and into our document just so we can so we can save it for future considerations? Or, or just a let me find the link on Open Source where I got it from Open Source Summit. Kevin, if you could, yeah, you, dropping that text in here, it might be helpful. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, it was um, either on, you know, you're an attending email or on their website for. Um, All right, cool. But I think we're going to start seeing more of that after the whole KubeCon thing. All right. Um, Outreachy, Google Season of Docs, those are coming to a close, at least in terms of the selection process. So just that's what's going on there. Um, we are looking for more DEI badge reviewers. So, um, Ruth, I know you're part of those conversations. Do you have any comments on on that at all? Or I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but no, that's fine. Uh, we're looking for more viewers, and I think I should have linked the form link there. We would have like a info session on May 18th. So, yep, you can share that, okay. and also the budget appreciation event. If you've not signed up please do sign up for it. Uh, the link is there, the open collective link. Oh, nice, Christy's interested. So yeah, I'll link the form there so you can sign up to be a reviewer. 
Thank you, Christy. Great. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Christy. Um, and then just kind of the last thing in this last three minutes here. Um, it looks like we're having pretty good feedback on the project badging component. So um, just because of the success of event badging, moving forward with project badging slowly, right? This is not something that would be, be open, say, tomorrow. So here I was trying to capture things that had come up in the DEI audit team that have been coming up in the chaos, the, this working group over the last couple of weeks. So the first for chaos passing, um, so it, this would be kind of the, the first level that a project could get. And I think really the only level that we could consider within the chaos project based on our current capacity. Um, right now it's called chaos passing. We could call it chaos recognized, chaos awarded, chaos acknowledged, anything like names would be open at that point, you know, so we'd, it's just some sort of recognition that we would provide. So um, put anything you want in there in terms of names, if you have ideas. The time frame that would, would be that an awarded badge lasts two years. Um, we have two cycles within which projects could apply. And this could be one cycle as well. We could make it a three month cycle. So communities could apply for a badge in the months of September and October. And again, in the months of March and April. So we have this time bounded window when we know that we may get a bunch of reviews. Again, these are just, I'm, these are just pulling ideas. Um, the application would be an online form that opens a GitHub issue the same way that we do it with events. This issue would ask for two things. One is a, a, a hyperlink or a pointer to the code of conduct for the project. And we would be willing to, to take a look at the many different forms the code of conducts come in. And the second would be a pointer to a DEI.MD file, which would have to be placed into a community repository. And I have a link here to a sample, just kind of a sample DEI.MD file. So this would be the markdown file that, that say like the Augur project would put in there, you know, kind of like a community folder and says, mm -hmm. this is how the chaos, I'm sorry, this is how the Augur project is attending to project burnout. This is how the Augur project is thinking about inclusive leadership and so on and so forth. And this then gives the reviewers really we're providing reviewers. everyone gets their own urn that's how yeah. we're dealing with burnout <laughs> no <laughs> sorry is that wrong okay never mind <laughs> so in the from a review perspective then we're only asking the reviewers to look at two documents one is the code of conduct for the project and the other is this document that's it and we, we don't have to traverse the project. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And this is also a document that's not only helpful in review, but I think it's nice for the community members as well, <laughs> that they can say, hey, this is great. This is how this project is attending to burnout. This is how this project is attending to inclusive leadership. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's spelled out for other community members as well. And then lastly, uh, two reviewers are assigned to an application. Uh, they review these two documents that, in that open issue. And based on the review, we would have a checklist again and a chaos badge is awarded. What do people think about this? We have zero minutes. So <laughs> you can't make any comments, but what do you think? <laughs> okay, I got a, a good thing from Ruth. So I never know what to call that thing, a party favor thing. It's, I, I, it's a party. It, it is. It's like party. It's party. It's like a celebrate, <laughs> celebrate, celebratory. It's like New Year's Eve. Woo! And a thumbs up from Justin. So except, except, for, except we're all sober. I think is <laughs> that's what I saw. So I, this is great. I think this gives us, if we all kind of agree to this, this at least gives us something to kind of start building around. You know what I mean? And obviously, questions will come up as we start building this out. Um, but I'm pretty happy about this and pretty excited about this work. Yeah. All right. We're done, everybody. Thank right. you so much. Um, you're all amazing. Have a great Wednesday. Have a great Thursday, Friday into the weekend. Whatever you're doing, take care and we'll see you around, OK? Hey, Carol. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.